The gospel is the good news of Jesus coming to save sinners. Luke 1, um, 1 Timothy 1, 15. The gospel is the good news of Jesus coming into this world to save sinners. That is the simplified form of the gospel. Matthew 1, 21. I want to also say that we don't have different kinds of gospel. It is one. Matthew 1, 21, he shall save his people from their sins. You shall bring forth his son, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So let's write down 1 Timothy 1, 15. Matthew 1.21. Now, why is this important? We have tried to define the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ coming into this world to die and rise to save sinners from their sins. Period. That is the gospel. Why is it so important? Before we move to why is it so important, the gospel is one. We don't have prosperity gospel or healing God. No, no. Mm -mm. The gospel, that word gospel is good news. It's one. Mark 1.15, let's write that down too. The Bible says the time... Is at hand, repent and believe the gospel. Jesus Christ preached the same gospel. And moving to why it is important now, Jesus Christ preached the same gospel. That's the first reason. Jesus Christ said, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth of the and the light. I am the light of the world. In fact, Jesus says in John 3, he says, this is the condemnation that men hate. Men hate the light because their deeds are evil. So this is exactly what Jesus Christ preached. The true gospel of Jesus Christ is the good news of him coming to this world to die and rise to save sinners. That's the gospel. That is what we must believe. That is the word of God. That is the good news of God to every one of us. And before a good news can be appreciated, the bad news has to precede. All men are sinners. All men. We only have two categories of sinners. Those in Christ and those out of Christ. That's all. It's like in the time when Noah finished constructing the ark. The only reason those outside the ark perished was because they refused to enter the ark. When Noah told them, the rain is coming, coming to this ark. And those people said, uh -uh, what do you mean, Noah? We have been living in this place for ages. We have never seen anything fall down from heaven. Not to talk of rain that is going to, you know, they just simply refuse to believe. The Papa, okay, we have rain to water the ground for our crops, but I don't believe that rain will be so high to cover these mountains and all these things. You know, so that's the same thing we have today. There are sinners in Christ that are saved by grace. They still have the sinful nature, but the spirit of grace, the spirit of God is working in them, pushing them. 
in the right direction, working on their, our mind, working on our heart, and those outside of Christ. That's the gospel. And just like when you have something original, you have its fake. I've never seen a 15 euro bill or a 25 euro bill. So there will never be a fake of it. I've never seen an original. The same way there are 5, 10 euro bills. So you see the fakes. Any other thing that is called the gospel that has not the news that man is a sinner and Jesus Christ died and rose to save him. Anything that diverts from that thing is not biblical. It's not the gospel, it's something else. It's not the gospel, it's something else. So why is it important? Christ preached it. That's the first reason. Christ preached it. Number two, it is only through the true gospel that we can know Jesus Christ. We can only come in relationship, in true relationship with Christ when we believe the true gospel. 1 Corinthians 1.17, the Apostle Paul. 1 Corinthians 1.17, the Apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Why is the gospel important? That is the true message that Christ brought to the world. To ask why the gospel is important is to ask why was it necessary for Christ to leave his glory in heaven? Why did he need to be born of a virgin? in a very degraded manner next to animals? Why did he need to live a humble life to be born into the family of a carpenter? Why was he betrayed and finally sold and finally crucified and he rose again? Why all this? For the sake of the gospel. He demonstrated his love in going to the cross. And the only way we can relate with Jesus Christ is when we understand the gospel. When we allow that good news be a part of our life. There is a uniqueness in Jesus Christ because it's the only way to the Father. It's the only one that lived a righteous life. It's the only one that died and rose from the dead. So forgiveness is available only in the name of Jesus Christ. We are commanded to pray only in the name of Jesus Christ. In heaven, we will not have denominations. We will not have churches. We will appear in heaven as individuals. The same way the gospel, the true gospel, understanding the true gospel is important, is also, it also necessitates that we understand the true teaching, the true biblical teachings. Because the devil primary aim, is primary gun, is primary device to defeat an attempt to stop people from enjoying the blessings of forgiveness and reconciliation is simply to deceive and to pervert the truth. He did it for our first parent. He is a master at doing it up till today. But we must not allow the truth to be perverted. Christ came to die for our sins. That truth must sink within us. And we must experience the fruits 
of the gospel, which is forgiveness and reconciliation. Somebody might ask, was it really necessary for him to die? Was it necessary for him to be beaten 39 times? Was it necessary for him to be crucified on the cross? With all those pain, was it necessary? Yes, it was. The soul that sin shall die. That's the law. And the other strange thing is Christ chose to come into the world at the time when they had the most wicked form of form of um, execution. The most wicked form of execution. So the gospel is essential for us not only to understand it, but to ensure the fruit of the gospel is being produced within us. It is so, so important. Because one thing is important about the death of Jesus Christ. It's not an automatic gift to everyone. Repentance and reconciliation is commanded according to Mark 1.15. We have to, at one point, acknowledge that God is right. All of us have sinful nature. And we all need to come to Jesus, repent, start, allow his word to change our hearts, put him as the ruler in our life and let him guide us through this evil world so that we can we not only enjoy eternity when we take when we live here but we'll be enjoying that eternity here in form of peace of mind and joy in the midst of all we are going through the gospel is an essential thing finally because Jesus Christ commands the disciples go into the world and preach the gospel. That is what we find at the end of all the by or all the gospels that the good news be preached. Matthew says, go into the world and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son. And, and that's what we see in the book of Acts of Apostles as the church was being established. They preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3. They preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, Christ the Savior. In fact, Peter is saying in Acts chapter 4, we have healed this man by the name of Jesus. You remember the guy you crucified with two other people? It is in that name, that man at the center, in his name that we have healed this man. They preach the gospel. That's why it's so important. We have been commissioned to, to preach the gospel much more importantly, it's our duty to ensure there is one gospel. The message of the Bible is not two or three or four. It is one. No. It's one. Christ came into this world to save sinners of man, chief. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. First Timothy 1.15 says that, Matthew 1, Mark 1, 15, 6, that, Luke 19, 10, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. So the gospel of Christ is simply Christ dying to bring forgiveness and reconciliation. Any other gospel apart from that, is not the gospel. In fact, any other gospel apart from that is an attack on the original gospel. Because the aim of that other gospel, if we can even use that word at all, 
The aim of that other message that does not include forgiveness and reconciliation to the death and resurrection of Christ is to distract from that gospel itself. And this is why the Apostle Paul was very emphatic that the true gospel must be preached and must be believed. So it is important that we understand the gospel is Jesus Christ coming into this world to die and to rise for the forgiveness of sins, not to heal. Healing is something that belongs to God's sovereignty. Jesus Christ did not die and rise to guarantee us healing. However, when we are sick, we should pray in the name of Jesus on the basis of his mercy to heal us, his love and compassion. He has died for us for our sins. We plead his mercy and his love and compassion. Even though the Bible passages, 1 Peter 2.25, Isaiah 53 verse 5, uses healing as a figurative expression of healing of the soul, of the sinful heart, not bodily healing, because the scriptures does not support that. We need to understand the true gospel. And we need to believe it. Not only to believe it, we need to allow God to use us as an agent of passing it to people that have not heard it or that have not responded to it. I pray that we would um, be able to grow with these words and these few words who are fruit in our hearts. Amen.